There are two amendments on the ballot that deal with crime and justice. One will give voting rights back to people convicted of felony crimes. The other gives new rights to the victims of crime. We start with Amendment 4, known as the Voting Restoration Amendment. Here's Farron Salee. Right now, felons in Florida have to wait five years after serving their time before they can apply to regain their voting rights. But a yes vote on Amendment 4 would change that. I have a minor marijuana charge, which is a felony. I am not able to vote. Alan Rael is one of roughly 1.5 million ex-felons here in Florida stripped of his right to vote. The system is broken and Amendment 4 can fix it. If Amendment 4 passes, they and other felons not convicted of murder or sex offenses would automatically have their rights restored after they serve their time. We believe that people deserve a second chance. They paid their debt to society. I think what this is is a ploy by the Democratic Party to expand its voter base. The group Floridians for a sensible voting rights policy is also opposed to Amendment 4, saying that it makes no distinction between one-time offenders and career criminals. They also point to numbers that they say show one-third of Florida felons return to prison within three years of their release. Still, this amendment has the backing of 74 percent of recently polled Florida voters. The way I say it and I tell people, if you pay a mortgage, you pay off your mortgage, the bank doesn't keep coming after, uh -huh. you, after you for more money. Sure. You paid your debt to society, you did it. And then this is only returning the right to vote. Florida is one of four states that doesn't automatically restore voting rights to felons once they finish serving their time. Fair and Salee, WPBF 25 News. Now from the amendment that seeks to restore voting rights to convicted felons, we move to the proposed amendment to strengthen the rights of the victims of crime. Actor Kelsey Grammer is an advocate for Amendment 6, also known as Marcy's Law. Amendment 6 gives crime victims and their families a voice in the process and the equal rights they deserve. Please vote yes on Amendment 6. Mark Kelly spoke with people for and against Marcy's Law. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to have an attorney. What about my rights? In Florida, those accused of a crime are read their constitutional rights. But what about victims? Good question. What rights do victims of crime have? In the U.S. Constitution, the Founding Fathers didn't give crime victims any rights. But in our state constitution, victims are mentioned. It's just one line. It says victims have the right to be informed, present, and heard. But State Attorney Dave Ehrenberg says this single line doesn't go far enough. It's not too much to ask to put some language in the Constitution that doesn't equal the rights that defendants have, but at least gives some rights to the victims of crime. There are a lot of victims who are never told of hearings, who are never provided proper restitution, whose identity and location are never guarded. If passed, Marcy's law would give victims the right to privacy, being present at all proceedings, and to know when the defendant is released to name just a few of the new rights. It's named after a California woman whose family was confronted by their daughter's accused murderer while he was out of jail, on bail. The ACLU, though, is against Marcy's law. They say giving victims that many rights goes too far and will bog down an already slow-churning judicial system. We worry that it's going to severely strap state's attorney's offices to provide the services which are not funded in any way through Amendment 6. This is going to be an expensive prop proposition for the police and for state's attorneys. They won't realize the, the bitter pill they're getting with Marcy's Law. Now, Marcy's Law needs 60% voter approval in order to pass. It's already law in a handful of states, and Florida could be next. Florida voters will also get to weigh in on environmental issues. Ron Burke takes a closer look at Amendment 9, which addresses offshore drilling and vaping. Our waters are our state. Um, our waters are business in the state of Florida. Um, waters are quality of life in Florida. For those reasons, Jackie Thurlow Lippish says voters should say yes on Amendment 9. This former mayor of Sewell's Point in Martin County co-sponsored the amendment it would prohibit offshore oil and gas drilling in Florida's territorial waters and ban vaping in enclosed indoor workplaces. As a member of the Constitution Revision Commission, 
Thurlow Lippisch is seeking to tie a ban on drilling to the Constitution as an ironclad way of protecting present and future generations from potential unlimited oil and gas exploration. We have to send that message that we don't want it. We are different than any other state in the nation as a peninsula out in the oceans and Gulf. She's facing strong opposition from oil and gas interests, including the Florida Petroleum Council. Its executive director says drilling is already covered as a state statute, and he used the current case of the missing Saudi journalist to explain the need to have drilling available to protect our national security in an emergency. There's a controversy and a very serious situation involving Saudi Arabia right now. And who knows when the geopolitical landscape could change across the globe at a moment's notice and affect potentially our energy security across the country. David Micah also doesn't understand why a ban on drilling is bundled with a ban on vaping. One is, uh, is, is maybe health-related and one is, is clearly, you know, an environmental-type issue. Just they don't go together well. And, and people know that. And editorial boards across the state have editorialized to that, to that effect. The Stylin Drafting Committee uh, decided to bundle these two issues because they represent clean air and clean water. Thurlow Lippish fears if the amendment does not pass, the petroleum industry could run rampant with drilling in Florida waters and perhaps create another catastrophe like the Deepwater Horizon oil spill of 2010, which polluted an estimated 1,100 square miles of shoreline in Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. Jackie Thurlow Lippish says if this amendment passes, it would send a clear message to the federal powers that would want to develop in the waters beyond our state waters. But if it does not pass, she believes opponents would argue the people of Florida have spoken and that would make it extremely difficult to try to get a ban on drilling in the future. Ron Burke, WPPF 25 News. Coming up next, how safe is your vote? Is this just for show? <laughs> no, so this is not make believe. This is stuff that's actually happened. We're going to show you how hackers expose vulnerabilities in our voting systems.